Hey everyone, I'm Sarah and tonight we are going to be doing a drawing class. Um, our theme today is uh, chibi manga and the, the type of manga that we're going to be doing. Um, so chibi means small or short in Japanese and uh, so these are a particularly cute style of manga. Um, also known as anime, but anime technically is animated manga. So manga is what you would call the still comic-like um, or, or graphic novel-like illustrations. Okay, so welcome to the stream. If I didn't say that already. <laughs> Let me just go over the supplies that we've got. Let me adjust my camera because it looks like I'm a little bit off center. There we go. Um, I've got a 9 by 12 drawing book. I like Strathmore, but anyone will work. Hello, Crixano. Welcome to the stream. Um, tonight I have a ruler, and so um, if you want to grab a ruler or a straight edge of some kind, this might be good. We're going to be doing a, little, a few little measurements, but you can eyeball it if you are good at measuring distance. I am not. Uh, you can use a number two pencil. But I'm going to be using a drawing set because the number two pencil doesn't show up dark enough um, on my camera. So I'm going to be using a little bit different drawing set. I also like to keep extra erasers handy because the, as you can see the eraser on the number two pencil goes very quickly. And I also keep a pencil sharpener handy. Okay. Now I use a set called Giaconda. And this actually has uh, several different types of pencils. It's got graphite, lead, chalk, and um, charcoal. I had to think about that for a second. But what's most important of what it has, it has a kneaded eraser. And this means that you can knead it into the shape or size that you need. Like if you want just a very small, you know, bit, then you can do that. And it also has what's called a spreader or a blending stump. And this is where you can go in and, and blend all of your um, pencil marks. So very handy. You can buy these by themselves like at Walmart or any craft store and I highly recommend grabbing one. There, it's just um, newsprint that's been wrapped very tightly but it's very handy and especially for like getting into small spaces. Um, and uh, I would recommend if you don't have one of these, you can either use your finger or you, you know, just to spread using your finger, or you can take a crumpled up piece of paper and, and do that as well. Okay. So um, I just want to show you, let me open up to a blank page here. I just want to show you our reference drawing tonight. So if you want to go see the reference drawing, it is always available on my Discord server. Here is the um, address for the Discord server, but you can also, uh, there is a link on my site. It's under the About section, the About tab, and there's a link for Discord, and you can go there. And here's what you will find when you go there. So um, it's the art share server. It'll be a B and you'll come to reference photos. And then I always have the reference photo for the day on there and you can make it bigger if you want to. You can actually click on open original and that will make it even bigger. So you can see it's very handy to have a reference photo um, to go by while you're drawing, so you can follow me, but I think that a reference photo is, is a nice option. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be using the 2B pencil. Again, you can use a number two. The first thing we're gonna draw, of course my nose is itchy. One second, let me just get a tissue. Excuse me. All right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to be drawing a circle 
that's about four inches across. So that was why I grabbed this. So I'm going to put a mark here and a mark here. And that's about what we want. Now I can draw a very light line. I mean, you probably won't be able to see that because I'm trying. Hey, Flux. Um, I just got started, so we haven't even started drawing yet, so you are good to go. Welcome to the stream. All right, so I have my very light line on there. You want to draw these as light as possible because we are going to be erasing them. All right, now I'm going to do another four inches. I'm going to line that up right at the two. And then that is how we are going to get our circle. This is not a great circle, I'm not going to lie. You can do sketchy marks until you get it. There we go. So I went way outside the lines here. <laughs> All right, so let's see what we've got here. I'm not actually, I'm better at drawing circles just by eyeballing it personally. I have, as you can tell, not that great at, at um, in fact, I'm just gonna erase this. <laughs> I'm gonna start over, you guys. Hopefully you are better at drawing circles. You can use a compass. I don't have one handy. By the way, always blow, don't wipe. For me, it's just easier just to draw it. It's a, a little wonky circle, but it's all right. It's all right. Okay, we are gonna do a couple more guidelines. Maybe I'm gonna just even that out at the bottom there. There we go. Okay, the reason I always say blow don't wipe is that if you wipe from your page, and you can smear the pencil, especially if you once we get into like the charcoals and things like that. Um, it's very easy to smear. Okay, so we've got this. Um, we are going to do. Uh, her face is going to be turned to the side. So um, what we're going to do is right about halfway. We're going to draw a little guideline here, and then we're going to do a line that's kind of curved over to the side. I'm also going to put a little hook for a cheek. Now the thing about chibis is that they're very cute. And we can go ahead and erase this cheek line here. Okay, we're going to do another line that's four inches down from the bottom of this circle. Just a very light line. This is going to represent the bottom of her body. Now, notice that the body is the same size as the head. This is the mark of a chibi. Chibis usually have very, very large heads, large eyes, tiny nose, tiny mouth, very short body. All right. So let's go ahead and draw the eyes. So the eyes are going to fall right underneath this first line here. And it's going to be kind of a curved L. So what I'm going to do first is a curved line and then a little another curved line going, but see how it kind of looks like an L? That's what I meant by that. And 
and we're going to actually give it just a little point there. It's kind of a, and that's going to give the illusion of eyelashes. Oops, I just lost my eyelash. So I'm making it a little thicker in here and thinner towards there, but I did lose my eyelash, so I just need to give it another little point. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, but since it's to the right a little bit, since her face is tilted, it's not gonna be as big. It's gonna be a little bit smaller. So it's gonna start a little closer to this center line. Center line, because of course it's not actually centered, it's off a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit closer and it's gonna be a smaller L. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I just thicken it a little bit in the middle and make sure that I've got that point for the, the eyelashes the illusion of eyelashes. All right. Now what we're going to do is we are going to draw a J and this is a pretty large J. So like the letter J on both sides. Now the J on this side is going to be smaller. that. Then we're going to do circles right above the end of that J. Those are going to be like the whites of the eyes. I, I mean, not the whites, but like, you know, like the reflected light. Sorry. The whites of the eyes is what we're about to draw. Okay. So that is going to not go all the way to the end, but it's going to start just a little bit outside of our J and it's going to curve all the way around and come right up beside that light. Remember, it's a little bit smaller on the right hand side. Okay. Now, right about where the cheek starts here in that center line, we're just going to draw a little dot. That's our nose. And then we'll draw a little mouth. Actually, I think that mouth is a little too high. Let's, let's do that maybe down here. And I'm going to put the nose right above there. I'm thinking too, I'm not sure I may bring her cheek in just a little bit. There we go. Well, yeah, they, they do look really creepy for a little bit until we, you know, we've got some uncanny valley going on. We can go ahead and erase our guidelines here. You don't actually need to erase the horizontal one because we're going to be using that for her bangs. So you can leave that one there if you want. Okay. So now we're going to actually add an ear. The ear, the top of the ear is always right at the top. If you want to continue drawing your guideline around, um, it's always right at the top of where the eye is. So it's just going to curve around. It's going to go past her head a little bit. Just kind of a teardrop shape, like a half teardrop shape, I guess. I'm going to erase the inside of that. 
and hers is just going to kind of hook and go down. She's She doesn't have a super thick earlobe there. We'll be coming in later and thickening our lines, so you don't have to worry too much about that. All right, so let's see. This will curve down a little bit. And then we're going to have, she's just going to have like this kind of a swirl on the inside. So I'm just going to go up and down. And we can put like a little circle for like a little earring or something. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and add the body. All right. So about halfway between this line and the chin, right there, is where we're going to add the body. And so it's just going to be like a little triangular. So it's going to come out on both sides. Like that. All right. Then we're going to do the arms. So the arms are just going to be curved, kind of um, long ovals almost, except for they'll be kind of squared off at the end. That is not the right angle. I'm going to give it a different angle. She does have her hand kind of back a little bit. Now the cool thing about these is that we don't have to do a whole lot of detail. Just like you basically are just going to make like another little triangle almost at the bottom and that shows the indication of a hand. But we don't have to do a lot of detail on the hand. All right. Now this other one, it's kind of turned away from us and it's going to be bent because she's holding a lollipop. You can't stay dropping off here. Have fun. Thank you. Bye, Flex. Thanks for joining us. All right. So this one is going to be curved like that because she's going to be holding a lollipop. All right. We want to go ahead and put the lollipop in place. So it goes almost all the way up to her mouth. Big circle. We're just, we're not filling in the details yet. We're just getting the general shape down first. And we can go ahead and erase out. There. Okay, now we need to do the legs. So these are going to, they're almost like teardrop shapes, but they're going to flatten out at the bottom. And they kind of curve in a little bit because she's got little dainty feet. They sort of curve up. See how there's like that angle there? They're going to curve up just a little. Now her right, uh, left leg, I guess it's on the right side, but it's her left leg is going to be bent. So it's going to come down kind of at an angle and then angle back. So remember the whole point is for everything to be very cute. So we want these to be pointy and we can erase our guideline down here.
All right. I hope everybody's had a really great week. Has anything exciting happened this week? You can go with the creepiness of it. Well, there you go. I mean, I think mine looks a little creepy right now, too. It's just because she doesn't have hair and stuff like that. That will help a lot once we start adding that. But first, before we add hair, we're going to actually add her clothes. All right, so she's going to have kind of capped sleeves, which means they're going to poof out a little bit. So we're just going to kind of make it a little bit of a circle. Just round it. And then just like a, a little smile line underneath there. And you can erase out the guidelines from the middle. <sighs> then she's going to have little lacy frills, which is basically just kind of like, remember when you used to make clouds when you were, or like flower petals when you were um, in, I don't know, elementary school and you just did these little loops, kind of like W's. That's what you're going to do. Little, little, little flower petals there. Let's see. We also have kind of a neckline here that's hiding back behind the lollipop. And that will also have flower petals going around it. Little lacy, lacy parts to the neckline. Okay. Now, probably about halfway we're going to draw a cur slightly curved line it's very slight but the, it is a little bit curved this is going to be her waistline and we're going to come just a little bit farther down and make it a belt and it should go right into her hand now a little bit farther Let's see, starting just a little outside, it's going to come down just a little bit farther from her body. We're going to do another kind of smile line. Make this one kind of light because we're going to be just using it as a guide. And it's going to curve up. It's almost like an umbrella. All right, now let's erase out all the bits in the middle. Okay. So there's a couple things that are going to be going on here. First, we are going to have the our frilly lace. So let's go ahead. Uh, let's see. Well, actually, I don't want to draw that just yet. I'm going to go ahead and erase my line, but I can still see it. Like, so I'm erasing it mostly, but I can still see it just a little bit. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to make her have pleats. So these are going to come out kind of in that same umbrella curve, except for it's going to come out almost like a triangle. So it'll, curve on the other side too. And it's going to come just down to where that line was. We'll do another one here, leaving a little bit of space in between. All right. And then what I'm going to do is connect the outside part here and then every other part. So like the, the outsides of these things that we drew, just like a, a curved line, just a, like a little smile line like that. Then I'll go, I'm going to go back and put my, that line that we had there before, I'm going to go back and put it in there. Now we can do our little lacy bit at the bottom. Our little 
flower petals. Like that. Okay. Now for her shoes, we're just gonna do a little scoop. And let's see, we need to give her like a bow. So we'll, how we'll do that is we'll do, so her center is a little bit off, so it's not gonna be right in the middle. It's gonna be a little bit off to so just do a circle there. And we're gonna do either side of a bow, which is like a triangle. So it's a triangle coming out this way and then a triangle going out that way. And then inside your triangle, you just do a little V. Inside this middle part, I'm gonna do a kind of a curly Q. Okay, I'm gonna give her some suspenders. And that's gonna come right up to the left, uh, the right side, excuse me, of her left arm, right arm, but left to us, you know what I mean. So give her some suspenders. And we have to give her some on this side too. And then we're going to give her some pleats in the sleeves as well. So the way we do this is we do a curved line and then we do another less curved line, basically. So a curved line this way and a less curved line. Okay, so now we are ready for the hair. So remember we left this line? This is fine, we're gonna leave this line here what we're going to do is we are going to probably about an inch from her face from the, I mean, from the top of the head, we are going to give her a curved line and these are going to be her bangs and it's going to come all the way to her ear. Then we're going to actually continue down the side of the ear. and then it's gonna arch back up. Let's see, I'm gonna make mine just a little bit more rounded there. Okay. Now we're going to take this, this line here, kind of emphasize it going across. And it's gonna also come out on the other side. So it's gonna go past her head and curve down. And you can erase that line if you want. Then it's going to actually come like where that hooks out a little bit, it's going to curve down towards her head. And there's going to be a little piece that comes out just like a little, a little scoop there. Okay. Now we need to give her some eyebrows. So starting right, above, like almost to the end of the eye, but it's gonna be in the hairline. We're just gonna do a little curve. I don't know if you remember my anime class, it was quite a while ago. I wanna say it was the week of, it was the week of um, Valentine's Day. So that's how long ago it was. 
but we talked about what different facial features meant as far as manga and like how how it looks. Remember that eyebrow on the right hand side is not going to be as big because she's turned away from us. Okay. So our bangs here are actually going to curve up like that. All right, now let's see. My girl, I kind of want to, I'm going to poof her head just a little bit. So I'm going to make her head just a little bit more rounded at the top. <laughs> like that. And I'm going to give her a ponytail, which is going to start, um, probably almost to like where the, the end of the eye is right about there. And it's going to curve up. I'm, I'm running out of page. I, I put mine probably a little too high. Come down and it's like almost like an S shape. And then it's going to come to a point and see, let's see it, hers comes to a point like right past where the ear goes like that. So I'm looking at the reference photo to see where I want to draw everything. Okay. So we can go ahead and put our lines in here. So, you know, she'll have like kind of a line coming up from there, maybe a couple little, little ones on the side. She'll have a line coming up this way. These are just slightly curved. Now the ones in the middle of her bangs are going to be curved the opposite direction. So they'll come be coming this way and then they'll be going that way. So these are curved out. And I do some of mine shorter than others. Gives it a little bit more of a, a natural appearance. All right. Now we can give her like a little barrette if we want. So the way I like to draw my barrettes is actually, so they, the way they have it in the picture is like a, um, one of the triangular ones, but I don't like to do that. I like to do kind of the, the flat barrette like that. And we can still put like a little flower on it. So we'll just, I'm just going to mimic her belt. And then the same thing, you just do your little V's. Let's see. Now we've got some lines going this way. One that comes right across. Let's see. And these are going to do the same thing that the bangs did where they, they flip the curve. All right, and then we got to get her ponytail. So there's like a, one that comes up like a curve. Starting a little bit higher than that. Comes up and kind of S's. We've got one that's going to start a little bit higher than that. It's going to kind of arch.
like that. Okay. Now we need to, we're going to kind of start drawing in some of the details. All right. So first things first, in her eyes, we're going to do some diagonal lines that are going to go from the bottom left to the top right of the eye. Like that. We're going to do that in both. This is in the pupil. All right. Then we're going to lightly just shade that in. She should start looking a little less creepy now. Oh no, probably not, probably not. Okay, so now we're gonna start shading in some of the other parts. So we're gonna shade in the middle of our two pleats in the sleeve. We're gonna shade the suspenders. Just the belt, we're not gonna shade in the, um, the bow. The bow's gonna stay the same color. All right, now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna shade the whole thing of like these um, pleats that we made earlier. So go ahead and shade that. And then I'm gonna show you something cool you can do. So I'm not shading these very dark. I'm actually letting my pencil go pretty, pretty light. Then what I'm going to do is up towards the top, I'm going to go a little bit darker. And then I'm just going to kind of blend a little bit. Now we can get our blender and do this. So we don't, we don't, you don't need to do it with your pencil unless you really want to, or unless you don't have a blender. There. But see, because it's darker up at the top, it gives the illusion. I'm gonna see. These need to be a little bit darker. It gives the illusion that it's recessed. We can do the same at the top and bottom of her little sleeves there. Like that. Okay. We're not done with all the detail yet. There's still quite a bit to go. Okay. Now, we want to go ahead and we want to really clearly outline all of our stuff. So, Go as dark as you can with your pencil. If you have a different pencil, I've got silky black. Um, 
Let's see the silky black too, which is very dark. I'll show you guys what that looks like. You can see that's very dark. And so this is called inking, which in comics is very common. It's where they come in afterwards and just go in and like outline everything. And what that does is it gives it a more stylized look. But once you know where you want all of the lines to be, that's when you can come in and ink. Now I'm not going to ink all of it. I'm not going to do all of the lines. I'm going to leave like her hair lines. face. Remember, we haven't finished the lollipop yet. I'm not going to actually do her mouth. I will, however, ink her, the top of her eye. And I'm going to actually ink those lines that we did inside the eye. Let's see, I'll link the eyebrows too. Remember the eyebrows are just slightly thicker towards the middle. Alright, let's see. What else do we want to ink? Let's do the outside of the sleeves. And we can do the little lace part if you want. I'm going to do the belt and the suspenders. I'm not going to shade them in. I'm just, just outlining them. I'll do the uh, this bow here. We'll go ahead and do her arms. Also, when you ink, the other thing that it accomplishes is that it kind of cleans up your lines because now you have guides to go by and since you're going over with a darker, we can go ahead and ink this circle for our lollipop. And if you want to do just two little lines that come down from the lollipop into her hand. So we've got only doing the white part for now anyway. I'm going to look at it and decide whether I want to do that inside part or not. Maybe I will. I think I will. And then we'll also do the um, Her 
little frills there. I forgot to shade in her little shoes. So you want to do that? Okay. Now you can use, either use your 2B or I'm going to use my 4B, which is slightly darker. We're going to actually, oh, that is a 6B, not a 4B. There's my 4B. Um, we're going to actually add in shading. So I'm going to do except for the light of the white of the eyes, I'm going to do shading that goes across and it's going to actually come down on the, on the other side of her eye. Same thing. It's going to angle this way. come down just a little bit on the other side of the white. She also is going to have a couple little cheek lines. These are too big on that side. They're kind of close together. It's like kind of like her blush, her blush. All right, let's see. So let's do shading here. We're going to down at the bottom and then just gradually get lighter as it goes up. So I'm not completely shading in. All I'm doing is, so down here might be kind of dark. I'm going to shade here and on the underneath of her hair there. We'll do the same kind of shading we did here. We'll do back here on the ponytail so it'll be dark at the bottom. And then it'll come up. Now we're going to use our blender to blend all of this in. If you want to give her a little bit extra, like the dark there, you can. You don't have to. That's only if you want to add a little extra. Let's see, where else does she have shading? I think that's pretty much it for that part of the shading. We can use our blending stump to come in here and just might, I might even give put a little bit of shading down at the bottom here. So all I'm doing is using my blending stump. You can also use your finger. In fact, finger might work better for the hair. And I'm going to actually make her barrette. I'm going to shade it in. There, like that. And I might take my, my 4B and just kind of make some of these lines a little bit darker since I went over them. Okay. Now let's add our swirl. So first we're going to do a curly Q that comes around that way. Then we're going to go around the outside and it's going to gradually get bigger and come down there. We're not going to fill this in yet. If you have colored pencil, you can. I've got happen to have this red chalk pencil, but and you could use any color you want, but you can come in 
and you can do red in here, which will make it stand out a little bit. I actually want to get make her eyes a little bit bigger. Okay. Now Pretty much we're done with the chibi part, like the, the little girl. Um, we went, I think I made her legs a little bit fatter, but it's, it really doesn't matter as long as she's cute. I think that's the, the main point. Um, we can go ahead and do a couple of pieces of candy if you want. So, and this is just to kind of accent her. Um, let's see. So we'll do a circle. Approximately a circle. Oh, here I should be using my number two uh, pencil. And we'll have kind of like her bows, we're going to have like triangles that come, come, they're like with rounded corners that come from this. And then these are going to have kind of curved V's. These we just did little little V's because they're far enough away, so you can't see them. But these are going to have curved V's. Then we're going to have a swirl. Comes around like that. And that swirl can be our color. And then we'll have like a little bit of shading, kind of like we did in the skirt, like in the pleats. We'll have a little bit of shading here at the bottom and then gradually get lighter. And you can use your blending step again. This is all just extra. You do not even have to add these if you don't want. This is all just extra. And then the, in the, um, up in the corner in here, I'm going to outline this again, just to make it a little darker. Okay. We're going to do another lollipop up here. So just a big circle, another swirl. We're going to, we have a lot of swirls in this. So all I'm doing for the swirl is I do kind of the inner swirl that, that comes all the way to the left when it ends and then an outer swirl that ends like on the right hand side of the circle. Just an inner and an outer swirl and I just connect them to each other. I'm actually pretty excited about tomorrow's um, painting. We're doing an acrylic painting class and I am going to be teaching because it's 4th of July here in the United States. I am going to be teaching a uh, flag and fireworks painting and I'm pretty excited about it. All right. Just outline that and then I'm going to do a little stick. So it's a line that comes down. Another parallel line that comes down right next to it. 
and we'll do like a little bit of shading at the top and down along one side and that gives the illusion that it's a curved stick. That's it. This is our cute little chibi. There's not really a whole lot to her. Um, like I said, chibi means small. So, um, as you know, as long as it's cute, big eyes, um, very, you know, short body. That's it. So remember always to sign your work. Now I like to do a little critique because critique is a very important part of, um, of your artwork. Like you need to be able to learn how to talk about your artwork and you need to be able to learn how to give yourself good advice. Um, one of the rules that I have in my classroom when in my, um, IRL class that I teach, I do teach this face to face as well. Um, is one of my rules is no disparaging the art or the artist. So you're not allowed to say things like, Oh, this is horrible or I'm awful or anything like that because this is a positive classroom. So, um, but you can still give constructive feedback in a positive way. So I call it SPF specific positive feedback. I actually got that from, there's a, a cool little gymnastics place called little gym that I took my nephew to and I got that from them. So I cannot claim credit for that, but SPF specific positive feedback. So what you do is you, we're going to look at this and we're going to say based on the reference image, which is what we were going for what is very effective and what is ineffective, meaning what I could work on for next time. So if I were to do this again, or if I need to add to it, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna bring up the photo again. I'm just gonna bring up the, okay, so here's our photo. So this is what we're looking at. Now she's got some interesting, it looks like in the original photo, there's like a, like these little swipes here. I did not add those in mine and I'm not planning on it. So I, I'm not entirely sure what that is, if that was intentional or not. Um, but okay. So now we know what that looks like. All right. First things first, I think my face may be a little bit large, either that or my eyes aren't big enough. I think it's maybe, maybe the eyes just aren't big enough. So what I would do next time is I would bring my eyes down and make them a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, I think just bigger eyes would probably work next time. This one should scoop down just a little lower. I'm not going to mess with it right now because I've drawn in my lines so dark that um, if I tried to erase them, we wouldn't be able to, like I, I'd, I'd still be able to see those dark lines. I think she looks cute the way she is, so I don't think that it's too much of a problem, but that is something I would work on for next time, is making her eyes bigger. And I think that would make her face look um, not quite as big because her eyes would be taking up most of her face. And that's what we want. Um, and in fact, this eye here in the picture is almost as big as the lollipop. So that is a good indication of how I did not make this big enough. <laughs> um, okay. So that's my first critique. It is technically a negative critique, but it is positive in that I'm saying something that I can add to next time. Next time I can, um, make my eyes bigger. All right. Something that I think I did well, that's very effective. Um, I really like my shading, like, especially like in here that I did the, the dark and then got lighter. I think that looks really cool. Um, let's see what else, even though the eyes aren't big enough, I actually think it's very effective how I did them that, you know, if they were looked exactly like how they are now, but just a little bit bigger, they would be perfect. I think I also like my design choice of going with a little, uh, rectangular barrette rather than the triangular one in the photo. You can always change up, especially little, little, uh, accessories and things like that. You can always change up, but I, I think that was successful. Other than that, you know, I think it's pretty successful. It looks pretty close to the original drawing and that's what I was going for. Like I said, just the eyes. I think that's the main part. 
Um, I do know for next time when I draw my circle, my original circle for me, it's better for me to eyeball it rather than try to measure. So that is just something that I learned about myself today. Um, but you know, every, everybody does, you know, has a different style. And so you may want to use the ruler and then just draw your, um, your little parts of the pie. And that might be how you do yours. Now, if you were following along today, I would love for you to join my discord and upload a photo. Um, here we have it. It's, it would go under the art crit. So let's see if we have anything. I'm going to pull it up. I do. Okay. Crixano. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to share. Okay. So if you look here, so first of all, this is excellent. Did you use a marker or did you use a colored pencil? Cause that is really dark. I'm, I'm really impressed by how dark you got that red. So one thing, um, I think that is a colored pencil. Wow. Well, that's pretty impressive that you got it that, that saturated. Okay. So, um, Oh, I'm, I'm drawing in the wrong place cause I'm using my mouse. Okay. Anyway, you, you guys see now, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. So one thing is the cheek. You could actually change this right now, but the cheek just make it a little more rounded rather than see how it comes down to a point here. I would just round it out just a little bit and that will help that quite a bit. It looks like you did the same thing as me where you didn't do the eyes as big and that I put that on me because you were copying what I was doing and I didn't make my eyes very big. So of course your eyes aren't going to be very big either. Um, I would also probably bring for future reference, bring the nose and mouth down a little bit. Again, I remember that I did mine a little higher and ended up erasing them. So, um, that is on me as well. Now your shading here is very effective. You did a very good job of, of making it dark and then blending it up. And also the shapes of your hair look really good. Um, this, the shading down in here too, like the shading in her pleats. So clearly shading is definitely a forte for you. You did a really great job with the shading. So that is the most effective part is your shading. And so it was the same for both of us. I think our shading did, we did really well. So we just need to make a little bit bigger eyes. And then, like I said, I would just round this cheek out just a little bit. Um, and then you're good to go. I think this is pretty good. So thank you very much for doing the drawing with me today and then uploading it. I appreciate that. Um, let's see, I'm going to take, bring the discord window down so you can see me. So, um, <laughs> Prego. So, Thank you for joining me today. If you did do the drawing and just didn't want to share, that's no problem. Um, I would definitely encourage you to do your own critique. And like I said, don't think about what you like or don't like. Think about, and I know I use those terms some, but think about what's effective and ineffective. Like what's really working in the drawing? Like what's making it look like our reference photo? Likewise, uh, you know, what, what isn't working? What could you do differently next time? But always give yourself a pat on the back because you showed up, you did the drawing, and so you deserve credit just for doing that today. So thank you very much for joining me. Tomorrow at 2 p.m. Pacific time, we will be doing an acrylic painting of the American flag with some fireworks. And um, so I am very excited about that, and I hope that you'll join me. If not, have a fantastic weekend. And if you are here in the United States, uh, States, I said steaks. Hmm. <laughs> if you are here in the United States, enjoy your holiday and happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. Thank you everyone for joining and have a wonderful weekend.